Indonesia is a paradise for new and renewable energy. All types and potentials of new and renewable energy are here. This tropical country called Jeems of Equator certainly gets sunshine all year round. Nearly half of the potential for new and renewable energy has the potential in this sunlight. But not yet 1% has been utilized. This tropical country, which receives rain for about half of its time a year, also has abundant water resources. But from the electricity potential of 69 gigawatts, only 8.6% of it has become electricity. This wind-rich country has barely utilized its wind resources. Wind power generation is still less than 1% of the potential. A tropical country which is at the same time agricultural, has a very large biomass potential. Only about 6.5% of it has been utilized. Likewise, geothermal resources, which are one of the largest in the world, are only utilized around 10%. The potential energy from the sea in the form of tides and waves has not been utilized at all. No less great is the potential for waste that still surrounds cities in Indonesia because very little has been converted into energy. Apart from those already identified, there are still many other energy sources that have not been officially identified, such as aquaculture for a maritime country which is of course very large, which can be processed into new energy sources and third-generation biofuels, namely micro and macro algae, especially if Indonesia wants to develop the next technology from its circular economy, such as capturing CO2 for hydrocarbon fuel, energy sources from waste heat and so on. Then for the next few decades Indonesia has a new and renewable energy source that far exceeds its needs. What has been identified alone is about the equivalent of 420 gigawatts or about seven times the electrical energy from the fossil that is currently installed. And only about 2.5% of this potential has been utilized. Furthermore, if Indonesia wants to change its energy management pattern from a centralized one to a distributed one, then Indonesia will have an energy management system that is a no single point of failure. How does the concept of distributed no single point of failure new and renewable energy work? Well, we all need electricity for all our daily energy needs. It is likely that we are also still using the internal combustion engine for our cars. So in addition to needing electricity, we need renewable liquid fuel replacing fossil hydrocarbons, or sometimes it can be filled with biofuel, but sometimes it doesn't. Herein lies the main role of the microturbine that we designed. It can directly generate electricity by using any heat source, mainly from sunlight using a solar collector, but it can also use biomass either directly or processed into biochar, waste heat from the process of making synthetic gas, or from ethanol which is also can be produced from biomass. Furthermore by using the electrical energy generated by this microturbine, we can also produce hydrocarbon fuels using syngas as raw material through the gas to liquid process with fischer tropsk synthesis. If all of these are put together, then the concept of distributed new and renewable energy will L be formed, which supports each other. When one is not available, it is easily replaced by another. This is why we call it no single point of failure then Indonesia will have an opportunity to become a truly independent country from the side of new and renewable energy.